Let's look a little more at the binomial distribution and work through a few examples. I'm going to assume that you've already been introduced to the distribution and looked at at least one example, and in this video we're going to look at some examples where the conditions for a binomial distribution are satisfied and some where they are not. So recall these conditions for a binomial distribution. We have a fixed number of independent trials, and we're going to call that number n. Each trial can be one of two possible outcomes, and we're going to label those success and failure. The probability of a success on any one individual trial is p, and this is going to be constant from trial to trial. And the random variable x is going to represent the number of successes in n trials. And then the probability the random variable x takes on the value little x is equal to our binomial formula here. So on to an example. The probability that a randomly selected 40-year-old pregnant woman is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome is approximately 0.01. 25 40-year-old pregnant women are randomly selected. What is the probability that exactly two are carrying a fetus with Down syndrome? We have 25 trials, so a fixed number of trials, looking at 25 women. The women are randomly selected, so knowing whether one woman is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome tells us nothing about whether a different woman is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome, and so the trials are independent of one another. The probability any one individual woman is carrying a fetus with Down syndrome is 0.01, so the probability is constant from trial to trial, and we are interested in the probability exactly two are carrying a fetus with Down syndrome. In other words, we're counting up the number of successes. So if we let the random variable x represent the number of these women that are carrying a fetus with Down syndrome, then yes, x is going to have a binomial distribution with n is 25 and p is 0 0.01. If we want the probability x is equal to 2, then it just goes into our binomial formula. n, choose x, p, to the x, 1 minus p, to the n minus x. And this works out to 0 0.0238. Suppose an ordinary six-sided die is rolled 16 times. What is the probability that on exactly five of the rolls, either a three or a four comes up? Well, again, we've got a fixed number of trials here, 16. In each trial, there's actually six possibilities, the numbers one through six, but we are only interested in whether a three or a four comes up on each of these trials. So we could really redefine this and say that a success is getting a three or a four. And a failure is getting anything but a 3 or a 4. So for a 6-sided die, that's the numbers 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. So even though there were 6 possibilities to begin with, we've redefined it here into be these 2 for a success and a failure. So we've got 16 trials. We've got success or a failure on each one. The trials are independent because knowing what happens on one roll doesn't give you any information about what happens on another. So we have independent trials and the probability of success is going to stay the same from trial to trial. The probability of getting a three or a four. And if it's a perfectly balanced die, theoretically, then the probability of success is two out of six. And so if we let X be the number of rolls on which a three or a four appears, then yes, X has a binomial distribution and n is going to be 16, and p is going to be 2 out of 6. And so the probability that x is equal to 5 is found from our binomial formula. n, choose x, p, to the x, 1 minus p, to the n minus x. And this works out to 0 0.2078. A similar example here, but a die is rolled until a six comes up three times, and we let x represent the number of the trial on which the third six appears. So we are rolling a die, we're doing a similar type of thing, but here the number of successes is fixed. We're rolling the die until we get three sixes, so the number of successes is fixed, and the random variable is the number of the trial on which you get that third success. So we do not have a fixed number of trials, and so this random variable x is not going to have a binomial distribution not going to have a binomial distribution. It actually has something that we call the negative binomial distribution. But that's very possibly not that important to you. In a pool of 30 job applicants, six have a criminal record. You randomly select eight from the 30 for an interview. What is the probability exactly two have a criminal record? We have a fixed number of trials, eight. 
Each trial can be one of two possible outcomes. The person has a criminal record or they do not. And we're counting up the number that have a criminal record. All of those are conditions of the binomial distribution. However, here, one of the important conditions of the binomial distribution is not satisfied. Here, if we think about this, on the very first trial, there's a 6 out of 30 chance of getting someone with a criminal record. But suppose for a second, the first person did have a criminal record. The chance the second person has a criminal record is 5 out of 29. If the first person had a criminal record, then the second one has only a 5 out of 29 chance of having a criminal record. So knowing what happened on the previous trials gives you information about the future trials. And so those trials are not independent. And so if we are counting up the number with a criminal record, and we call that our random variable x, say, then that is not going to have a binomial distribution. It actually has a distribution we call the hypergeometric distribution, and we could actually work out this probability, though too much difficulty, but this is a binomial video, so we'll just leave it at that. The number of putts a PGA Tour player makes in his next 10 putts. Okay, again, we have a fixed number of trials, 10. Each trial can be one of two possible outcomes. They make the putt or they miss it, and we are counting up the number of putts they make in their next 10. So a few of the conditions of the binomial distribution are satisfied here. However, not all of them. The probability of success over those next 10 pots is going to be changing. They're not exactly the same pot, all the rest of it. They're going to have some long ones, some short ones all over the place, this type of idea. As well, they're not going to be independent of one another. So if a PGA Tour player misses a putt, there's a very good chance the next one is very close and he's a very good chance of making that. And if he makes one, then they're going to the next hole before he putts again and there's a good chance that'll be longer and all the rest of it. And also, human beings are not robots. If you make a bunch of putts in a row, most people are feeling a little bit more confident. If you miss a bunch in a row, they're feeling a little less confident and that might have an effect on the putting. Regardless, if we let a random variable x equal the number of putts they make in their next 10, that has some distribution of some nature, but not a binomial distribution. What is the probability there are exactly eight lightning strikes in the first five minutes of the next thunderstorm? Well, we are counting up something here, the number of lightning strikes, but we do not have a fixed number of trials. It is not something like where we're tossing a coin a hundred times or shooting a hundred free throws or what have you. There's not a fixed number of trials. So there's a fixed time frame, five minutes, but not a fixed number of trials. So right away, if we let the random variable x be the number of lightning strikes, it has some distribution, but not a binomial distribution. So we have to think through this. Every time we have one of these problems, we have to think through and think of whether those conditions of a binomial distribution are satisfied. If they are, then we can use the binomial formula.